Let church say amen. 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 It's a beautiful day. I am Minister Thorpe. I'll be bringing the word today. And the reason why I'm a minister, because I'm a preacher in training. Amen. In my church, uh, I couldn't call myself a pastor because I am not a pastor, but my pastor called me a minister. So Reverend Johnson gave me that name, Minister Thorpe. So I wear it proudly. Amen. Amen. Okay. So today we're talking about adoration and love. Before I get started, I really want to thank this church for making last Sunday happen. Oh, y'all need to give yourself just a little bit of credit. Come on, y'all can give yourself a hand clap. Come on now, we did it as a team. It wasn't me, it wasn't just the choir, it wasn't just the deacons, it wasn't just the elders, it was everybody working together as a body of Christ. The body of Christ did that. Y'all y'all understand, it wasn't just one, it was everybody, so I really appreciate it. That's one thing I love about this church is when we come together and do something, we get it done, amen? Amen. Let's get let's jump into it. Now, the topic, the uh, scripture that you see in your program comes from Deuteronomy 13 and 4. And I'm going to read it for you real quick. And it talks about God is talking about uh, listening to a false prophet. But one thing God says in there, he says, you must follow the Lord your God and fear him. Now, that word fear has to do with respect. Now, some ter- uh, translations say serve only the Lord your God. I brought the other Bible by mistake, but we're going to get through this. Amen? All right, let's do this. We can still do this. Uh, you must follow the Lord God and fear him. You must keep his commandments and listen to him. You must worship him and remain faithful to him. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. So. As we talk today, our topic is adoration, and the first thing that popped in my head was, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Come on, y'all know that song. No more. But you gotta ask yourself, what is love? And a lot of us, uh, we look for love to be these emotional feelings. We look for love to be some type of uh, pixie dust that God just sprinkled on you and all of a sudden you have love for you. But can I get you, give you a de- another definition of love? Love is intentional. Love is intentional. So when we show love and adoration to God, we intentionally wake up in the morning and say, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. See, I don't know if I have, I don't know if I have church members in here, but I think some of us, we wake up and say, Lord, Thank you for my health. Lord, thank you that my big toe moves. Thank you that my arms are moving. Lord, thank you I don't have any chest pains, and if I do, I'm still able to walk. Lord, I I have love for you. I'm intentional. When I wake up in the morning, I'm very intentional about telling God thank you. Even though this is something simple and it seems very small, it makes a big deal. Have you ever hit your pinky toe? on the corner of a table? Have you ever slammed your pinky in the door and you act like you can't use the whole left side of your arm, you just walk around, ah, my pinky hurt, ah, you know, just, you can't grab stuff, you can't hold things the way, it's a small thing, it makes a big deal, right? You ever got a paper cut? (laughs) It's a very small thing, but it makes a big deal, but the thing about it, we're being intentional in the thanksgiving, but it makes a big difference in our relationship with God. One thing about me talking, talking to uh, newcomers in Christ, um, they see how I act, right? And I'm not saying I act the best. Some of y'all might be you, you know, who you think you are, you know. But some people are like, Jeff, you're, you're calm, you're patient. Some of y'all might say he's calm and patient. Well, that's because you knew me in my 20s. I mean, that's a big change now. But the thing about it, some people, believers in Christ, when they're new in Christ, they just got baptized, they accepted Christ, they see a seasoned believer and they say, I want that, but they want where you are right now. They don't realize they have to go to the back of the line and start over. And what happens is we look for those love of feelings and emotions, kind of like when you got baptized. Everybody remember when you first got baptized? And you was like, yes, I really love God. Everything is good. Everything is great. And then, bam, you hit this wall, and you're like, Christ don't love me anymore. But what happened was you lost your intention. 
You lost the first love that you had towards Christ, and that was your intention. See, it really shouldn't matter how you feel because, because you're intentional. This is how marriages stay together. You may not feel like loving each other, but when you wake up in the morning, you would intentionally want to let your spouse know, I love you, I care about you. This is how we cling to God. God, I don't feel like being around you right now, but what I'm gonna do, I'm still clinging to you. I'm still hanging on to your thread. I'm still hanging on to your hand. I don't feel like it right now, but I'm intentional in this because I have a purpose. We intentionally want to worship so we can hit God's heart with a song. We intentionally speak to people with love. And in order for us to love God with all our strength and all your neighbors, we need rest. <laughs> How many of y'all say rest? How many of y'all know you need rest? You definitely need rest and you need intention. Now, some of y'all like, Jeff, you're wearing this word intention out. Yes, I'm going to wear this word out until it sticks in your heart. Attention, adoration leads to my intentions to love people back. So if I adore God like I should, if I love and worship God like I do, it should cause me to want to act a certain way. It should cause me to want to be a certain way. Our actions are intentional and they have purpose. The purpose comes from the love that we have with God. Now, some of y'all remember the scripture, we love Christ, uh, we love God because God first what? He first loved us. So if you want to know where do you get your love from, you don't get your love from people. You don't get your love from things. You don't get your love from your big sister or your big brother. You get your love from who? God. And this is why we have to develop our relationship with God because if we don't have love, then us coming to church and singing every, mo or every morning is, 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 is meaningless. It's just noise. If I come in in the morning and I don't have God's love in my heart and I'm just playing this piano going through the motions, it's, it's better if I stayed home. Are y'all following me right now? If I go to work every day saying I love serving people, but I'm doing it because I'm just going through the motions, it's best for me to stay at home because I do not have love in my heart. And where does that love come from? That comes from God. And it comes from us spending time with him and us developing a relationship with him. And even if we're at the back of the line or we're in the middle of the line or we're seasoned saints, we still have to be intentional in our relationship with God. The love that we have should come from God. It should be bust, bursting and overflowing and joyful and, and, and it, sh it should go without ceasing. Now remember I said it should go without ceasing. But if the love isn't coming from God, then where is it coming from? Is it coming from people? Is it coming from your position in life? Is it coming from your finances? Is it coming from the car you drive? And like I said, if our love is coming from those things, then we're just going through the motions. We're just noisy. We're just up here in church just making a bunch of noise. We're just at the piano, just banging on the piano. We're just in a choir singing, just singing. How many of y'all want to be the Christians that just go through the motions? Isn't that a waste of life? Your whole life you go through life and you wake up and you realize, oh my gosh, I'm 65 and I've been going through the motions. Now I finally understand how to, how to love Christ, which is a good thing, right? It's kind of like whenever uh, I became a teacher and five years of being in a teacher, I was like, wow, being a mechanic, I was just going through the motions. I'm telling y'all, God was with me those first couple of years of me being a technician because I don't know how I fix those cars. I was just going through the motions. But when I was able to become a teacher and really fully understand what I was doing and what my purpose was, then everything became so clear. And us as Christians, sometimes we're just going through the motions and things are just not clear. 
And this is why our a long time to love God, to worship with him. I have this song uh, by William McDowell, and, and it's called uh, when, when I Worship I Am Free. I cannot think of the song. I can, can anybody help me with that? No? Okay, it's all right. The point that I like in there is what he's saying is when I'm with you, I am free to love you. I'm free to be with you. I'm free to worship. Basically, when I'm with God and I'm adoring, I'm loving God, I'm free to be myself. And in that time as I'm free to be with myself, uh, being, being myself with God, I'm learning from God. Have y'all just ever had a moment where you're studying scripture with God and you feel like God gave you the biggest download ever? And your eyes were open to scripture and then you, you understood things just a little bit better, right? And then your love for Christ changed. You're like, wow, I didn't know the scripture meant it like this. I thought it meant it like that. And now you have a whole outlook on life and then your life has purpose. Your purpose, you, you have intentions now. Now you're intentionally waking up in the morning and wanting to talk to God. You're intentionally going to people, treating people like you would treat God. Things start to change. This is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 4, and I really advise y'all guys to really read chapter 12 first. Because Paul is trying to tell you something in 13 that carries on from 12. And he's talking about how you would be in a ministry, how to make your ministry more effective. And he says, one way I can tell you is by love. And then Paul goes to talking about being a noisy, clanging symbol and all this stuff. Then he says, love is. Love is. Come on, we tell it to our spouse all the time when they're acting up. If you really love me, you would be patient, you would be kind. Come on. But see, some people really need to fully understand that. And what, what he's saying is, if we have real love in our hearts, which comes from Christ, then our ministry and what we do is more effective. See, this reminds me a lot of David. David... The reason why they called David a man after God's heart is because when David worshiped and spent his time with God, it's like shooting arrows at a bullseye. Every time David worshiped, it hit God right in the heart. Therefore, before we act in emotions, we must really think of what we're doing and we must really think of that time to really worship God. How many of y'all know that you don't have to answer people immediately? How many of y'all know when somebody says something to you and it cuts you real deep, you do not have to speak at that moment? There's a time for you to walk away. There's a time for you to hum a little bit. There's a time for you to worship. And then there's a time for you to come back and answer. See, in our immaturity, we speak very quickly. In our maturity, we try to say things back to get even or make them feel the pain that we feel. But can I tell you, that part right there is connected to sin, to sin, and we're all sinners, right? But every time we sin, and sin is an archery term, so when you look in the Greek, uh, you, you see it as an archery term, and it means to miss the target. So if I'm aiming for a bullseye, and I'm not holding my bow and arrow right and I let it go and it hits below the bullseye, I sinned, I missed the target. And whenever we, whenever we sin, we fall short. So instead of hitting God's heart with worship, sometimes we can hit God's heart with complaining, murmuring, backbiting, ungratefulness. Sin. Are y'all catching? Are y'all catching this? Do y'all understand that I'm telling you that if we if we love God, we hit Him in the heart every time with our worship and adoration. And as we adore and we worship, that stuff rubs off on us. And when we're in people's lives, His love rub, rubs off on them. This is why your people are so attracted to you. If y'all are wondering right now why people won't love you, leave you alone, that's because you got too much God on you. 
You got too much God on you. They see something in you that they want, and they are around you. They are on you. They are watching every step you make because they want to understand how do I get where you're at, and the only thing you could tell them is worship. It's my worship. It's my long time with God. It's a time where I get to cry out and be me. It's a time where snot bubbles fall out of my nose and tears are falling out of my eyes and spits falling from my face and I'm on the ground, stomach hurting, worried, but I can do that because I'm in front of Christ. I can be open. I can love him like that. And the reason why I can love you because in my ugliness and in my silliness, Christ loved me first. And it's because of worship, it's because of adoration that I can love my neighbor and that I can love God with all my strength. Come on, y'all with me today? Y'all with me today? As I close, love is a step that we make towards someone with the intent of never letting go. I'm going to say that one more time. Love is a step that we make towards someone without, with the intent of never letting go. Uh, Nadia and I watch Married at first, fight, at first Sight. And I tell you, that show is so funny to me because people, they, people that have never been taught how to be in love do not understand what love truly is. They don't know. They, 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 I'm, I may see a, a group of people that have been married for 50 years. And in my mind, they never have problems. <laughs> I was always told that you, if you didn't ever think about burying your spouse in a backyard when you're mad at them, <laughs> you did not have love in your heart. But what, what, what seasoned people would tell me is, Jeff, there were times where we didn't speak to each other. There were times where we thought our marriage was over with but we never let go. We were still here. We're still together. And, and, I, and I want you to understand that's, that's adoration. Now, I know some people probably thought I was going to come and preach today and preach this, oh, holy is the Lord and oh, adoration and we're going to praise God. But if I'm sitting up there talking above your head and, and not hitting people's hearts and where they are right now in life, then adoration means nothing to you. It is tough to praise God when you don't feel like it. But we have to be intentional. We have to do it anyway. One thing I want to give to you <clears throat> is that when I think about love, uh, I think about Kais. Kais is a natural lover. I'm sorry, that boy is a natural, romantic, loving kid, okay? Uh, I'm not saying that Caden is not, and I'm not saying that Karis is not. Karis blesses us with his spit and slobber. I mean, we're, we're just anointed in it. But what I'm trying to say is there can be a time where Caius know he did something wrong and he can get a whooping, right? But he will still turn around and come up to you and say, hug, <laughs> hug. I just want to hug. And you know, the playful person that I am, I said, no, I'm going to give you a whooping. He said, not a whooping, a hug. So <laughs> there's times in our life where we really have to reach up to God and say, hug. Can I get a hug? I, whoo, Jesus. I, sorry. <clears throat> Life is tough. A lot of us have, uh, we lost our purpose. We lost the reason why we're alive. And in order for you to get that back, you're going to have to spend time with God. You're going to have to look up to God, and you're going to say, I need a hug. And you may not feel it, but after you finish worshiping, and after you finish spending time with God, you're going to feel so much better. And you'll be at a state of point in your life to where you can pass that on to others. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty, merciful God, 
the God has, that has been around for over 2,000 years, the Lord who never changes, who never fails. We really thank you for today. We thank you for our grace. We thank you for this worship service. We thank you for the strength that you give us when we don't have strength. We thank you for the peace that you give us when we don't have peace. We thank you for the ability for us to be able to worship, to fight with you, to be mad at you, to, to even sometimes use the strong word hate. Sometimes we could be so mad at you, God. Sometimes you can just really, really aggravate us and get on our nerves, Lord, but we still have that chance to turn around, God, even though we don't know what's going on, to turn around and say, Lord, I love you. I'm back. I need a hug. Can we try this again? Thank you for never failing us, God. Thank you for allowing us to live even in another century to spread that same love to other people that's, that's around us, Lord. So we ask, Lord, that, you, that the people that are around us, they're being affected by your love, they're being affected by your peace, and that only comes through worship and adoration. It only comes from us intentionally waking up in the morning and just really being with you, God, to just hanging on to you, Father. Even though our grip is shaking and, and our muscles are getting tired and we almost want to let go, Lord, you never fail to fill us back up and we thank you for that God in Jesus name we pray amen